Good evening, guys. Welcome back to ECQ Season 3. I wait. <laughs> no, make that my YouTube channel. Hey, Adam G. Tonight, I have a very special guest as I am so enamored by her ever since she joined Miss Universe Philippines this year. And I feel like, you know, this is really one of my dreams come true as a content creator on YouTube. She's a content creator, public speaker, and an entrepreneur. And I feel like she is at her most comfortable she has ever been in her skin now that she is making her most empowered move yet as a Miss Universe Philippines candidate. So without further ado, here she is. I'm so excited to talk with her. Please say hello to Miss Universe Philippines 2021 candidate from San Juan City, Miss Ayn Bernos. Hi, Ayn. Hi, Adam. Thank you so much for having me. Ang saya naman. Natutuwa talaga ako dun sa intro mo. <laughs> Thank you. Because that's who you are. You know, the, you know, the first thing that got me to you was like, Yung, ano mo, yung recent yung TikTok video mo as soon as you got announced as one of the top 100 contestants for this year's Miss Universe Philippines pageant. And as I was watching it, I felt ni hugot ka talaga na parang yung sinabi mo na, you know, this is a dream come true. This is the promise I made to the little Ayin 20 years ago. So parang it touched my heartstrings talaga. Thank you. Talagang malalim din yung hugot ko doon. You know, just being part of the top 100 is a big thing na for me. Kasi diba, I'm 26. The whole time I was alive, never naman ako qualified. So this is big for me and I'm just happy talaga to be here. <laughs> so can you actually believe it that you are now, I'm talking to you as a Miss Universe Philippines candidate? Some days, I still have to pinch myself. I don't really have to process I remember after I uploaded that TikTok, the next morning, I said to myself, Oh my gosh, do I need to delete that? Am I wrong? Was I dreaming? But I'm not, so... <laughs> Sobrang, ang dami nakaka-relate sa'yo. I feel like lahat ng mga mga girls na frustrated dream nilang sumali sa Miss Universe habang nandito pa sila sa age limit they're kind of living their dream through you. I hope so. And I hope na just by being here, you know, more or more um, encouraged to join. Yeah. Groundbreaking talaga. <laughs> and so with that, how do you feel about the attention that you have been getting now since your foray in MUP? Yeah, I was actually really overwhelmed at first and I, I couldn't believe it. Sometimes I still can't believe it because I thought, you know, going into top 100, madami kami, 100. So, hindi ko talaga siya naisip na, oh, maybe the TikTok thing might bring me forward. Maybe a lot more people will recognize me. Hindi ko talaga siya naisip kasi. So, ngayon lang ako na, oh my gosh, oh nga, no. maybe people might be focusing on that journey. But overall, I'm still happy. You know, I will take whatever support I can get. And I'm just really grateful now. Kahit it's very unconventional to, for me to be here, I'm still supported by a good amount of people. At what point did you realize that you wanted to join MUP this year? Well, to be specific, the moment they released the first poster that said no height requirement, Yun talaga. Sabi ko talaga, that I was dropped the picture. everything. Yeah, as in, kinuha ko birth certificate ko, tinignan ko, dinownload ko application. <laughs> as in, I was just, whatever. Wala akong pake. I will go. I will try. <laughs> so, so, talagang dream mo talaga maging beauty queen all your life. Yes. Uh, I've been a pageant fan for as long as I could remember. Nung bata ako, I remember I would stay up late just to watch pageants. As in school nights, minsan, ganyan. Nanonood ako. And then when I was in college, nung merong opportunity mag-college pageant, I also joined. And then syempre, national pageants, hindi naman ako parang, hindi talaga ako molded for that, I guess physically. But, when I saw the opportunity, sabi ko, ngayon pa ba ako, give up sa dream na yun. 
What was the first Miss Universe pageant that you watched on TV? I'm curious to ask. I'm not so sure kung ano yung exact year. Pero I remember, pinaka-earliest memory ko is Miriam Kiambao. Because she went to my high school. And sabi, paulit-ulit sinasabi ng teachers ko, ay si Miriam, she's from our school. And alam nyo, kaya siya, she's, ano, she's famous not because of her beauty, ganyan-ganyan, but because when she slipped, she stood up. Parang, yun yung tumatak sa akin, na parang every time na I think of Miss Miriam, lagi ko na isip, oh, she she can stand up for herself. She's strong. So yun yun yung earliest memory ko talaga na na isip yung pageant scene. Oh nga eh. Tapos as I was researching more about you, sumali ka rin pala ng school pageant yun yung Mister and Miss CFAD Ideal Personalities. Personalities, yes. Uh huh. That was my first year in college. Tapos, syempre, me being... That was a very, very first opportunity talaga. And since I've always wanted to see kung anong feeling to be up on that stage, to pasarela, ganyan, I joined that first year. So, how was it? Nag-enjoy ka for sure? Yes. Actually, parang dun ko na-discover yung talent ko for speaking or my interest in speaking because I remember we were rehearsing for Q&A when, when I was in my first year in college. And then my partner then said, yeah, okay ka pala magsalita? So I go, okay pala ako magsalita? Tapos dun ko lang naisip na, oh, maybe I should be into that because you, like you said, I was in fine arts. Akala ko I was in the, you know, traditional arts. Hindi pala. So that's why I shifted to English language studies. Na realized ko, oh, baka iba pala yung path ko. Dun ko rin siya sa pageant na yun natutunan. Oh, <laughs> naisip mo ba na na parang, oh, sige, mag-English studies ako para kapag, you know, magaling ako magsalita para just in case I realize my pageant dreams. Bongga, pasok na ako sa banga sa Q&A. <laughs> Alam mo, hindi ko talaga inisip na it was ever possible. So I wasn't even planning for it specifically, but I decided to pursue whatever part of pageantry that I enjoyed watching. So parang ako, oh, bilib na bilib ako kasi yung mga smart answers. Sabi ko, gusto ko rin maging ganyan. So because I had that interest, I had that inclination towards the very strong speaker, sabi ko, maybe I can study something that will lead me to that, whether it was communication, journalism. Hindi ko sure exactly eh. Basta alam ko, with English language studies, medyo malapit ako doon. Hindi ko talaga siya pinlano specifically, pero, you know, you follow your heart and it leads you to really good places. And look at you right now. <sighs> Ayin, young Ayin will be so proud. Kung alam niya lang na possible pala. Yeah. Ano naman ako, parang <laughs> dream come true talaga. You know, I know how it feels like to really... Fulfill, to get your dream fulfilled, na parang nag-open agad yung door sa'yo, na parang, I'm finally qualified! Yes. <laughs> so, wait, before we proceed, can we give a shout-out to all our 26 viewers who are watching us right now? Arold Adu Idul is saying hello. Hello. Hi, Hello, Arold. Miss Ayin. Hedrick is saying Maria Tatil vibes. I love her. I, I love was her. actually about to say that. <laughs> Thank you, Hedrick. Grabe naman, Maria Satil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. You have the same height. You have the same color of skin. Pareho kayong chari. You leverage social media on your to your advantage. So I see a lot of similarities talaga. So parang, I feel like you're the closest. Uh, you're the closest I could get to Maria. Oh my gosh, you grab it. I'm honored. Yeah. And then who else is watching us? Um, Ganda mo, Ayin Hedrick Horka is saying, um, Hujun Kaabay is also saying hi. My love, Ayin Berrios is also, <laughs> Kurt Cassandra Santiago is watching. And Jel, my friend, is also watching. Hi, Jel. Hi, Jel. Hello, Jill. Thanks for watching. And someone is watching us all the way from Bangkok. Wow. I, oh, diba? Inter, ano? Bongga ng beauty mo. International level. <laughs> na. I, Kuson Turut, is saying, Sawadi ka! Sawadi ka! And then, ito. 
Misa Saklaw is saying, you're the biggest threat in MUP. So good luck, Ayin. Oh my gosh, thank you. Pinaprocess ko pa nga lang nakasali ako. <laughs> So when you get all the when you receive all these compliments messages how do you feel? <sighs> For me talaga it's it's hard to kind of see myself from that angle because to me I'm not exactly you know a a long time pageant uh, like a pageant trained person so it's hard for me to put myself like beside all of the queens that I admire it's hard pa at this point but I guess I'm just really honored na at least at the very least you know some people believe in me and see that in me pero at this point I really just want to focus on getting better being at my best self you know being my best self for the competition kasi this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me I think and I can't really be you know distracted by any expectations kasi like the results are not something that I can ever control. That's really not my, I don't have any say in that. What I can do is to prepare as well as I can. I can just focus on the things I can control. Like for example, yun challenges namin, yun lang. And if that makes me good enough, then great. But if not, I'm just happy nandito talaga. <laughs> From one to 10, can you rate your kilig, your feeling what? right now? Pwede 1,000. Hindi talaga ako mga get over. Parang everyday. Parang, oh my gosh. I get to do this. I get to train. I get to photo shoot. Ganyan. Interview with Adam. Diba? Parang, what? Hindi naman. Hindi <laughs> ah. Oh, iba pa rin ang to be interviewed by Ayin. So let's talk about your life. You know, before we get to your to your background, I'm curious to ask, bakit ang research ko pangalan mo? Ang pangalan mo, Rosanne Bernos. Pero... People call you Ayin. Tapos yung pagka-spell ng Ayin is like parang pagka-rap na walang vowel sa gitna. So, is there a story behind it? I'm yeah, actually. Um, both those names are from my parents talaga. So my real name is what I'm, my full name is what I'm using in the pageant, which is Rosane Marie. Tapos Ayin naman is my nickname na they also gave to me. So I've always gone by Ayin. And yung Ayin na yon is from my mom's friend. Like somebody else was named Ayin. It's na cute siya sa pangalan na yon. So we adopted it. So yon, everybody knows me by Ayin. Pero ang legal name ko is Rosin Marie. <laughs> Mm. Ang cute lang. Bumabagay. Ang cute ng name. Tapos bumabagay pa sa personality mo. So, so since you, since, uh, getting introduced as one of the top 100 contestants for Miss Universe Philippines this year. And ito nga, in-upload na yung headshot challenge, eh, yung mga headshot mo, tapos yung intro video, in, in introduction video nyo. To be honest, you aced both rounds. Ang ganda, nung, ang ganda ng headshot mo, I just forgot to upload it. Pero ibang-iba doon sa nakikita. Kasi di ba sa, sa YouTube, nakikita namin, halos minimal makeup ka lang dito para... Yeah. Wow, parang ibang ay yung nakikita namin talaga na parang wow, she could really trans transform herself well. <laughs> and then sa intro video mo rin, talagang you got me there. Parang that video, the video that you made really captured your personality. As in ikaw na ikaw talaga. So did you conceptualize your headshot styling and your video package? For my headshot, I really got help there. So I had my friend Nico Locosme. So he's a very talented photographer. And he put that uh, photo shoot together because when I announced, the, <laughs> you've seen my TikTok video telling people about my delegation. And then, sabi niya, Ayin, oh my gosh, we need to shoot you. Kasi wala akong glam photos, wala akong headshots. I have nothing. Like everything you've seen before my delegation. I did my own makeup. And at that point, hindi pa ako nag how to put on lashes kasi naman, I had no idea this was possible. <laughs> so, tawang-tawa rin ako kasi yung pictures ko na nagkakalat was all DIY makeup, ganyan. So, 
to me, it was kind of like a fairy godmother moment na Nicola was like, ayun, let's take your headshots ng maayos para mapakita mo naman na you can also be a beauty queen. So, ayun, he definitely helped me with that one para, you know, I can really bring out my glamorous self na I don't think I've ever shown anybody. And then after non for my video, video naman, my intro video, I asked him like on the same day na he Nicolo okay lang ba can I take a video for this I know for my intro na rin para sabay na hindi sayang makeup ko Sabi niya yeah sure tas yun lang I just actually I spoke pretty like it we did it in two takes kasi gusto ko lang introduce sarili ko and since I do this pretty much for a living you know every time I would introduce myself for a talk ganyan I would say the same things and that's what I said during my intro video Tapos ayun, wala lang. <laughs> Ganun lang talaga siya. <laughs> Did you edit your video then at the same time? I had a friend edit it for me. Pero yung mga B-roll ko, ganyan, it was all from either my YouTube channel, my TikTok, yung mga dati ko ng content rin. Yun. I guess that's the advantage of having your whole life online, di ba? Konting, konting grab-grab lang andyan na sila. But, but you know, to be honest, for me, what I really love, the, the thing that really makes you stand out for me, not just your beauty, but because of your husky voice. Talagang bentang-benta sa akin yung boses mo because it's really radio-friendly. Yeah. So, tapos you speak well. So, how did you, you know, apart from taking up English studies, how did you become so good? In becoming a uh, in becoming a great public speaker. Honestly, I have been talking to myself a lot. If I'm being honest, yun talaga number one, and I think this is so underrated. Pero kasi whenever I would, for example, drive in traffic, imbis na nakikinig ako sa radio or halimbawa na nonood ng kung ano man, I would talk to myself, like pretending I'm giving a speech, mga ganong stuff. That's something that I really take time doing like practicing how to speak and then another thing that really helped was being a content creator because i create so much you know videos i, I create so many videos i host a podcast as well it's kind of inevitable for me na lagi ako nagsasalita eh. so i think if you spend enough time doing something talagang mag improve <laughs> and i'm also ano pala, i forgot to mention i'm a member of toastmasters international so i joined Two years ago, I would say, and that really helped me as far as impromptu and formal speaking is concerned. Because I ko yung mga more technical aspects of public speaking. Nice. Do you also love to read? I love reading. I love reading so much. You know, that's one of my other life goals. Naman is to write my own book. Because I love reading. Nice. Diba? So, pero up, hindi lang English ka magaling magsalita ha? Because I, I also found out that you speak Spanish. <laughs> I, speak, I speak Spanish, but very, very little. Parang I can get by, especially back when I was living in Spain. Ngayon, I can understand un poquito, pero <laughs> mas, ma, ano pa rin ako, mas confident ako sa English and Tagalog ko. And Filipino. Why did, why did you live in Spain for quite some time? I was there for 10 months because I was teaching English. I was teaching English in Spain. So how was the experience like? It was really fun, actually. It was more of my quarter-life crisis moment because I was working in digital marketing here in the Philippines. And then after a certain amount of time, I decided now, you know what? I need something new. I want to know what else is out there. And then I found out about this English teaching position in Spain I could apply for. It was still on a student visa. So it wasn't, you know, like a real job, but it was real enough that I could provide for myself. I could pay rent, ganyan, and I could live there for a year. And to me, that was amazing because it was number one, a chance to travel. Number two, just be in the other side of the world so sabi ko, eh, yun, like i said parang if i see an opportunity i go for it i don't think twice and i ended up in spain so how were you able to deal with the language barrier oh a lot of a lot of google translate especially when it's really difficult sometimes i would try i would really try my best to communicate in spanish 
but obviously I would speak I would speak in broken Spanish kasi hindi naman ako fluent pero dun ko rin na appreciate yung yun talagang difference sa languages ng mga tao kaya yun nga when people tell me I miss Ayina intimidate ako kausapin ka kasi Englishera ka ganyan no I'm also not fluent in other languages so ayun <laughs> I can empathize and Google Translate lang ang um, malakas. <laughs> yung, yung candidacy mo talaga is really, for me, ah, in my own words, talagang groundbreaking. Kasi talagang sinachallenge mo talaga yung, <laughs> yung, norm, yung accepted norm sa pageantry. And now that you are going through it, kamusta naman ang training? Oh my gosh, grabe talaga. I'm trying to enjoy it as much as I can, especially pasarela training. Oh my gosh, I've been trying to catch up because siempre a lot of the other delegates have been training for months, some of them years. And then here comes me, na TikToker. You know, a lot of people know me as a TikToker. Tapos sa sali akong training. So I'm, I'm trying to keep up. I'm trying to catch up. But I am really grateful because people are helping me, you know, especially with my training with Peter Rogel. I've been meeting the other KF girls. So parang it's inspiring actually to be training alongside them. Nahikita ko, wow, ganito pala yung ginagawa. It's like, you know, taking me backstage ng Miss Universe. Parang kasi nga fan ako, di ba? Tapos pinunta nila ako backstage and now I get to see how it's done. I get to do it myself. So even if it's tiring, I get... To, I get home late na, tapos ang dami kong hinahabal, may pressure. And I enjoy ko na lang kasi I keep reminding myself, di ba ginusto mo to? So yeah, all I need to do is do my best and hope that that's good enough. <laughs> so how how are you with your dog walk lunches so oh far? God. I don't think anyone understands how difficult it is until they have to do it. Kasi I've been seeing others naman do it eh, pero nung ginawa ko na, tapos... Oh my gosh, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. <laughs> parang feeling ko habang nagtitraining ka, parang kang, parang kang si Sandra Bullock nung Miss Congeniality. Na oh my bilok. gosh. <laughs> totoo, totoong totoo. Also, can I just say, gusto ko lang i-flex. When I was in first year in college, when I joined the first pageant, <laughs> I was Miss Congeniality. So. <laughs> <laughs> o, diba? May pride and joy. Like, So, anong, ano namang advice ang sinasabi sa ni Sir Rogel that you are taking to heart seriously? Well, actually, I'm taking all the technical aspects to heart talaga. Kasi, you know, simple stuff like pulling up, looking confident, projecting, working with my strengths, na I am trying to absorb kung ano man yung nakikita ng ibang tao sa akin. Because again, like I said, the perspective is really different from the outside in. Some people say, na, I'm not saying na I also think of, about it sa sarili ko, but some people would say na marunong ako mag-project, na they would tell me na, oh, humahampas ang bewang. So just simple stuff like that. I want to embody those. I want to internalize those. So I remove self-doubt. Because honestly, when you work with people as experienced with the trainers that I've worked with, you know, working alongside other beauty queens who are much more experienced, when they say good stuff about you, you just need to hold on to that. Para hindi mo, you know, so you don't drown in self-doubt. And that's what I've been trying to do, you know, mentally prepare myself. Kasi at the end of the day, yun naman talaga ang labanan rin. It's, it's all in the head. You need to know who you are and walk there with that, with that mindset. So, paano yun? So, how, how do you train with Sir Rogel right now? Is it on a daily? Is it daily? Or how does, like, how does a day look like for you now that you are an MUP candidate? Well, I still have my job. So, I, I have to give time to that pa rin. So, it's definitely, um, I... I didn't have time to fix everything to transition a full-time beauty queen. Hindi talaga. So I, I train like several days a week. Depend this is schedule. Because you know, at the same time, we're also working on the challenges. I'm also working on my my, my job, my business. So, ay, nakakaloka talaga siya the last couple of weeks. Pero where's the command? Um, I just need to stay healthy. 
True. You know, there's a comment here from one of our viewers. His name is uh, Romel Santos. He says, actually, for a newbie in pageantry, her pasarela has potential. Diba? Uh, especially the video... The, Especially the video that she posted prior to us knowing about her candidacy, the lines that she create is spot on considering she does not have any experience. Grabe maring ayin, ilaban mo yan. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Romel. Ha? Um, and that's actually one of the things that I've always been worried about kasi hindi ko alam exactly yung technicalities nun. But yun nga, what I always tell myself to just comfort myself is kung hindi ko alam, aaralin ko. And that's what I've been doing. So hopefully it shows in the next couple of weeks. Nice. Nice. <laughs> so, you know, there's no doubt everyone loves your determination. Talagang your determination to succeed. But how do you feel when, you know, some people then say that you don't fit the typical beauty queen mold? How do I you take this? Well, first of all, I definitely agree with them because I really don't. I really don't fit the mold. And I don't see that as a bad thing necessarily. I think it's progress. Because I don't fit the beauty queen mold, I feel like... I am representing a different kind of beauty that hasn't been seen before. So that's not a bad thing. I don't think that's a bad thing. It just means we're in 2021. Another thing is, well, I don't blame them either for thinking that way. It's how it's always been. So I empathize. I definitely see kung bakit ganun yung opinion nila. And I don't blame them. However, what I can do na lang while I'm here, you know, I can't, I can't give up just because a couple of people tell me that I don't fit in. I can just show who I am and what my purpose is. Because, you know, this Miss Universe is not just about beauty. It's about beauty and purpose. And while I don't typically, you know, I don't fit the typical mold for a beauty queen, beauty-wise, I've never lacked purpose. And I will continue to have purpose whether I corona or wala. I'm just here because sabi ng qualifications, pwede ako, and this has always been a dream. And it's about time somebody sees somebody like me. <laughs> you know what? I'm really impressed by what I am seeing right now. Where do you get this kind of confidence to power through, to overcome a lot of odds? I think it comes from the fact that I had to fight to cultivate my confidence. Because uh, when I was growing up, I was really insecure about my skin color. I was insecure about my body. I was insecure about so many things. But through the years, I don't want to live that way. Now I'm always insecure about this thing, that thing. I said, no, I can't. I can't be alone feeling conscious about sa katawan ko because I will continue to have this body, this face, this life, this name. So if I don't work on that now, I will continue to live life in fear. So sabi ko talaga, I needed to uh, I needed to work on my confidence. So sakto rin na uh, nung dumating yung time na Miss Universe Philippines accepted my application, I think I've had enough experience of confidence building na kahit maraming sinasabi sa akin yung ibang tao, I can take it in stride because I know myself. And when you know yourself, pag sinabihan ka ng mali about you, you don't have to believe them because kilala mo naman sarili mo. <laughs> Sorry, madam. Wala, wala. <laughs> oh, oh, alam ko marami kang pinagdaanan, pero alam mo, you don't come from this place of pittance. Instead, it's more of an empowered place. Thank you. I try to. I really try to. Kasi eh, pag iniisip ko, if I'm always angry about what's happened, ganyan, or what's about to happen, then I can't really create positive impact. Kasi impact naman talaga eh. Like, what are you doing moving forward? So, yon. I need to be empowered to have impact. And that's the goal. And now that you're an empowered woman yourself, now what's your purpose here in MUP? My purpose here is to represent the kind of role model that I needed when I was younger. Because when I was a kid, I would watch this every single year. And I, I, I keep thinking to myself, what if there was somebody there who looked like me? What if there was somebody there who represented me? 
yung kind of beauty ko growing up. Iniisip ko, would I have been more confident? Would I have had more trust in my potential kung merong nauna sa akin? So ngayon, moving into the competition, I keep reminding myself na, ayin, this is not just about your personal ambition. It's also becoming the person you needed when you were younger. Because I can't wait for another 5'3 Morena girl to join Miss Universe. I can't wait for another girl with my background, with my story to represent me. Ito na eh, naglabas na sila ng qualification na pwede na ako. So why not join, di ba? Yeah, exactly. So how do you feel that that changing that our beauty standards are finally changing. Do you think this is like a step towards the right direction Definitely. in terms of how we view beauty? Yes, I I like to think so. I like to think so. Because ngayon people are more open minded, which I think is very beneficial not just to us beauty queens but to everyone around. I really. You know, I, I think highly of the platform of Miss Universe. I know the impact is great. And dami talagang na aabot na mga tao. And if we are more inclusive, if there are more repre- there is more represent- representation on stage, then yung impact non sa everyday people, especially the little girls who want to dream big. I think that that says a lot about how we're progressing as a society and yeah, I, I can't wait to be part of it. True. And even if you're not joining MUP, and dami mo nang ginagawa. And as I look at your resume, wow, you not only you are a successful content creator, podcaster, but you also is are a founder of your own clothing lines. Impressed naman ako. You call it Morena the Label. So can you tell us how did this all uh, got conceptualized. Yeah, so actually, I've been printing shirts for as long as I can remember. I started when I was 15. So, I bought my t shirt went to Divisoria, print ako ng design, bent ako sa classmates. Ko. So, nung college naman ako, I actually did my thesis. I wrote my thesis about colorism in language. Kasi, di ba, um, I, I took English language studies, which is linguistics. So, parang, I actually was studying beauty standards ever since. Ang stinadi ko nun was how skincare ads um, represent dark skin and how we talk about colorism and beauty standards in media. So after noon, nung natutunan ko na yung mga bagay na yun, I was really empowered by the information that I got. And sabi ko, okay, what else can I do to further this, ano, this, this topic, this issue, this advocacy? Now, how can we empower more people na darker skinned, na morena, ganyan? And for me, bilang ang tagal-tagal ko na nag t shirt printing, and I also love statement shirts. I decided to start that. I started it in 2018 kasi... Yun yung alam ko gawin eh. So I kind of work with what I have. I work with my strengths. So I started this t-shirt business. Ni naman ako, honestly, like I'm not a mind-blowing designer. As you can see, if you've seen the t-shirts, they're all statement t-shirts. Very simple. Very, ano lang talaga siya. It's statements. And I think, I like to think that I'm good with that. I'm good with storytelling. So yun lang, I worked with what I have to hopefully contribute to that thing that I'm very passionate about, you know skin color positivity, just inclusion. Tapos yun, I started Morena the label, and I the same way na I talk about you know colorism sa brand ko, I also talk about it sa content ko. So it really is an all-encompassing thing sa buhay ko na whatever I do, I keep that in mind. Kasi that's my why. That's what I care about. Wow. Wow. I mean, you talk about your clothing line, tapos may podcast ka, and that, and you also have your own YouTube channel that you do a lot of work. So how does this how does this message intertwine with your with this MUP platform? Well, it's really you know I think just by being here is already a statement, and it's the same statement that I've been saying sa kahit anong project na gawin ko, whether it's Morena the Label, whether it's uh, Camp Confidence Radio, my personal social media. It's all about, you know, pursuing your best self, pursuing opportunities, and representing 
who you who you needed when I was when you were younger. So for me, I really needed a role model who was unapologetic na hindi nahihiya sa katawan niya, na hindi nagsosorry para sa beauty niya. And that's what I want to exude going into the pageant. I don't want to give into the pressure na I need to be this, I need to be that just to be here. I I want to be the same Ayin that produced my podcast, the brand, everything else and leave the competition as the same girl. Kasi sa tingin ko, there is so much power in being yourself and pursuing your best self without uh, just following whatever has been done before. And you know, and that's I guess that's how it all ties in. I just want to uh, to uh, see kung ano ba yung ayin na magiging proud ako and magiging proud yung dating yung younger self ko. So do you think you consider yourself as a trailblazer in your own right? I it's weird to say you know stuff like trailblazer or groundbreaking. I think that's something that other people need to. Uh, give me like if other people think that i've given uh, or like i have impacted them or their life in some way then they can call me a trailblazer i wouldn't say that for myself because everything i've done i also owe it to people and women who came before me bianca gonzalez who was like my tv role model she was the only morena like proud morena who was vocal back then so you know i i really wouldn't call myself a trailblazer i think it's for other people to decide hindi ako yung magde-decide kung ako yung trailblazer or not bala na sila doon basta ako pina-follow ko lang yung binlaze na trail ng mga empowered women before me and yeah, yun lang naman yung mission is to continue it so that others can follow. Siguro maybe not a trailblazer, but someone who's courageous enough to challenge the norms, especially when we talk about you know colorism and yeah. body positivity, like what you said, what like what you mentioned earlier. So, you know, I want to ask this question in a country where naturally dark-skinned people are conditioned to believe that the light skin ones are more attractive and more advantageous. How do you feel that we tend to let our physical appearances sometimes dictate our interactions with one another? It's really, it's definitely sad, but at the same time, I keep trying to have an open mind about it because this is a product of our environment, you know? Yung mga bagay na to, how we interact, what we think about beauty, what we know about beauty, what we believe, these are all things na are honed with the how we grow up. So for example, somebody who grew up think or being told na pangit yung balat mo, like you look a certain way or hindi ka good enough because you look like this, syempre condition yung mind nila. So for me, it's really about unlearning these things and having these conversations so that people can talk about them and kung may ma-pinpoint tayo na kailangan nating tanggalin sa sistema natin, then we can address it. So that's why I don't stop talking about colorism. That's why even with my content, na alam ko naman sa sarili ko, confident na ako. Pero some people wonder, bakit ang daldal mo pa rin about it? It's because for other people, they still need to unlearn. For other people, they still need to absorb this. And if we keep talking about it, you know, maybe we can impact others and maybe mas gaganda yung tingin nila sa sarili nila and sa ibang tao. And baka dumating tayo sa point in the future generations na it won't be the case. It, it may be slow progress, but it's still progress and we'll take what we can get. Do you think, you know, listening to what you're saying right now, do you think our high colonialism attitude has something to do with how a, t- a typical Filipina looks at her skin. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been well documented naman uh, yung, ano natin, yung history natin with colonialism that definitely impacts how we see ourselves today, you know? And sana nga mabago natin yun kasi balat lang naman yan eh. It's just skin color. At the end of the day, what really matters is who you are. And if we let physical attributes get in the way of getting to know people dahil meron tayong judgments, hirap yun eh. So ayun, we're moving forward away from colonialism, pero it it takes some work, no? Parang yes. It, it does take some work. I know, I, I know what you feel. So, 
how do you think you know, you say it takes a lot of work how do you feel we can slowly unlearn that kind of bias yeah there are so many ways to do that you know education is one but one thing that i think is very relevant especially in the miss universe philippines platform is representation if we put people now we look up to you know miss universe philippines is super prestigious but if we can have people who represent the what we would say in uh, our unconventional beauty or standards parang na elevate and people start to think oh nga no it's beautiful naman pala oh nga no parang napapaisip they think twice because now it's it's up there so i remember yung just just seeing these tanned queens on stage yun pa lang eh parang sobrang nakaka-inspire na wow parehas kami ng kulay i remember thinking that when i was younger parehas kami ng kulay and she's there and she's confident baka pwede rin ako so yeah that's one way we can do So as you look at those tan queens that you mentioned uh, that you said earlier Alexander William has a question here who is the pageant queen that you look up to the most like who is your inspirational queen I have multiple and I can mention for this one but I guess I would say spe- specifically sa experience ko ngayon it would be Maria Fadil Talagang siya yung, I, I remember when I was waiting for the announcement of the top 100, I kept lurking her Instagram page and listening to podcast interviews with her. Na parang, she, ju- she was just so empowered na wala siyang pakialam na she looked a certain way or like she was smaller. It, it didn't bother her. Tapos iniisip ko, wow, she's my height. She's brown too. I am brown and she was just so unapologetically herself and she was she knew how to be vocal you know and yung words niya very moving very inspiring sabi ko gusto ko maging ganun Have you tried reaching out to her or just probably drop a message I did I, I sent her a DM when I got into the top 100 I was like Miss Ma'am you inspired me like your words her words really hold me through the the anxiety of waiting for the top 100 to be to be announced sabi ko talaga ay nako if she can do it bakit hindi yeah she really and about as i i remember watching one of her ig lives and she, she really uh, mentioned how she took things <laughs> in her hands in terms of how she will navigate her narrative for Miss Universe. Talaga, talaga mas nagulat pa yung national director niya sa pagiging hands on niya na parang the, the, her national director at one point said to her, slow down, Maria, slow down. <laughs> we, gotta, we got it all for you. Pero siya, no, no, this is what I need to do. Uh, parang gumawa na siya ng certain parang schedule or planner na, okay, this is what I'll do for this day and today. So, do you think kailangan ganun ka talaga when, you know, when you're competing for Miss Universe na talagang you really have to know your identity, you really have know what you want so that people, especially on social media, will get to know you better, will probably put you, especially in a nakikilala ka nila, they will probably pu- keep putting you on their respective leaderboards list for your candidacy to propel up. Mm-hmm. I think so. I think it takes uh, a certain amount of empowerment and individuality and authenticity to be able to withstand the pressure to, fill, to fit the mold. Kasi yun nga eh, I've been told so many times in the last couple of weeks of how I need to be this, I need to do that, I need to look a certain way. And I understand it. It's because that's what's been working. But at the same time, I I think very underrated ang individuality and to me that's just very important. I put that high on my priority list and I did see that with Maria Fatil. I'm not saying it's a formula or anything. I'm saying it's just how I live my life. Whatever I do whether it's, you know, my work as a content creator or my work as an entrepreneur or my attempt at being Miss Universe Philippines individuality is something that I really value and I just want to bring that into the competition. Because anyway, we're here to make a statement. We're here to tell a story. 
And if you don't know who you are, that's kind of hard to do. So ayun, I'm just trying to remember, okay, ayin, sino ka ba? Nice. Nice. And natutuwa ako, alam mo na talaga yung purpose mo talaga eh. So, alam mo eh, pag, pag pinag-uusapan ba natin ang inclusivity and diversity, kasi nga ngayon i-remove na yung high challenge. So, what's your take naman on different types of women joining Miss Universe, like transgenders or obese women or plus-size models? Do you think uh, medyo nare-reduce na talaga yung... Kasi, don't you think na it's some sort of becoming unfair for these uh, naturally born or even to all these women who have been so disciplined in achieving their Coca-Cola bodies to, you know, to, to showcase their abs during the swimsuit competition. And then you see pageants like Miss Universe, you know, allowing all these plus size women, transgender women, and probably they might probably in the near future, increase the age limit. So how do you take it all in in relation to your candidacy right now? I don't think it reduces anything at all from the pageant or like the prestige of the pageant because the prestige of the pageant really depends on the impact. The impact it holds and gives to other people, especially the younger generation. I don't think it really takes away anything from Miss Universe Philippines to open up to different kinds of beauty. In fact, it adds to that. In fact, you know, the more people, the more representation we have, I feel like the more impactful it is. Because we're, we're moving away from just one kind. We are I, re, re-identifying kung ano yung ibig sabihin natin ng maganda. And yes, there is a learning curve. It's hard to accept for some people because it's been one way for a long time. But it doesn't have to be a bad thing that we're making progress in that direction. It just means that little kids who are not slim, maybe, little kids who are confused, maybe, little kids who are different might see themselves as somebody who has potential. And I think that is priceless. Hindi natin siya mababayaran. And I don't, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I think it's even, it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Well said. <laughs> well said. So, wala. Talagang kilalang kilala mo na yung sarili mo. I don't think, you know, even with the way you answer questions, it's really comes, it really comes from the heart. It really comes from a lot of experiences. Tapos like those master ka pa, so there's no doubt that you will be able to relate with everyone else talaga in your journey here in Miss Universe. So can we now go to the second part of our interview where I'll ask you like questions to, you know, get to know you better, but fast talk. So, okay, are you ready? Let's begin. Yes, let's begin. All right, so number one, what's, this, what's the biggest splurge you have indulged yourself recently? recently makeup kasi i've always had like drugstore makeup ganyan hindi naman ako masyado makeup talaga pero since joining the pageants i'm like shocks i need to invest on this face so yes makeup <laughs> <laughs> magastos ba talaga sa mga sa pageant nagulat ako nagulat ako sa gastos pero yes <laughs> it's worth it it's worth it worth it pagpataas <laughs> ng pampataas ng <laughs> ng value sa sarili, di ba? So, number two, what's the best compliment you have received in your life? I would say when people comment na you made me try, I really take that as a compliment. Kasi, you know, when people tell me na because they watched me, because of my content daw, na they tried for this opportunity and that opportunity. And to me, that's the biggest compliment you can give me to tell me na nag-work yung, yung sinabi ko and people actually acted. Yun talaga, number one. Sa tingin mo, if God blessed you with a towering height, do you think would we still see the same ayin that we are seeing right now? Would she still have the same purpose? I don't think so. Honestly, I, I don't think so. 
I think me being this short has allowed me to see the pageantry scene from a different lens, and not just literally. Because it's sure different view ko dito sa five years. But for me, parang I had to go twenty six years of being an outsider of just watching from the sidelines, and to me, having my idea of pageantry evolve from that position, iba talaga eh. Iba talaga yung naging experience ko. Kasi first of all, kailangan ko ipaglaban na deserving ako. Like, nobody's telling me, I mean, you were made to do this. No, I had to decide for myself. I had to apply for myself. And I had to, you know, continue to defend it for myself. So, so dun pala, I'm, ang dami ko na... Oops. Ano, Ayan, sorry. Okay. Is my internet... Yeah, not... yeah it's okay. I, I understand. Ganyan tayo talaga okay. dito sa Pilipinas. Problema yeah. ang Wi-Fi natin. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, eto, Ayun. may question si, si Alex. Aldrex tayong, which also is my next question. What is your weakest point or meron ka bang, what is your biggest insecurity? My biggest insecurity going into the pageant would probably be my lack of traditional training and experience. Because I know, I definitely recognize that I'm not a veteran whatsoever. I'm 26, pero ngayon pa lang ako nagsisimula, de ba? So that's definitely a weakness. But I keep reminding myself na it's just because I don't have experience in pageantry does not mean na kulang na experience ko sa buhay because while everybody else was training, I was doing something else. And maybe if I try hard enough, baka, baka that can work too. So we'll see. Yun lang. I'm just trying to catch up right now. <laughs> all right. Alamo, there are so many questions coming in. Can I, um, can I ask you all these questions para matuwa naman yung mga viewers natin? Because I think they're your fans. Super. That's why they're tuning in. Um, from Jesse Deal. How does Rusan Marie Bernos deal with expectations for being a Miss Universe delegate? I am trying to not worry too much about expectations because expectations are not stuff that I can really control or have any influence over. Like I said earlier, Deba, I can only work on my training. I can only work on myself. And so pinapasadjust ko na lang yung expectations sa akin kasi wala akong magagawa about it eh. Gusto ko lang talaga magkaroon ng good performance. I just want to make myself proud kasi yun lang yung kaya ko gawin. And yeah. So I sense from your answer you're not afraid of failure. Oh no, no. I have failed so many times. Like, sabi ko nga eh, top 100 is already a win. If I don't make it to the next or the next or the next, nakarating pa rin ako dito. That is... Oh, more than an I could achievement have itself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a la mala boy abunda question? There seems oh. to be one here. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. Confusing to. Would you rather go left where nothing is right or go right where nothing is left? Ooh, I would rather go left where nothing is right because I do believe that with my experience and with my heart, I am somebody who can find good things in the worst situations. And so even if ang iniisip ng question asker is, wala nang tama dun sa pupuntahan ko, I know I will find something that's worth celebrating. I know that I will find something that I can work on. Girl, ang bilis mo mag <laughs> Girl, ako parang, teka lang, it will take me like 10 seconds muna to fully absorb the question. Pero ikaw parang, how did you get to be trained for that? Madalda lang talaga ako. <laughs> does, reading, does reading talaga help? Kasi it makes your comprehension a I lot think better. So. Yes, reading, for sure. All right. Ang dami nila mga questions. Guys, sinagot na niya to sa mga sa 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 content niya. Yung when is it not okay? So panoorin niyo na lang yung sagot niya. Don't yeah, mas natural pa. Kasi if I ask her now, syempre naisip na niya 'yon. So parang True. 
So, hindi na. Pero ang ganda, JP Abarientos, I like your question na itong, would you rather go left where nothing is right? Diba? This is something that's really gonna make someone go berserk on the stage. So, what is one thing that you can't live without? One thing I can't live without would be strong connections. Because I guess I've also learned this during the pandemic, you know, being isolated from most people. It really matters who you surround yourself with. And to me, I've proven it time and time again. My support system, my family, my closest friends, they have really made me who I am. And I can't do anything, like anything at all without them. So, so how, how are they all taking this in? Talagang 100% supportado ka ba nila? 100% supportado talaga ako. As in, from number one, I remember nagkaroon ng news article about the height requirement being lifted. Natawa ako kasi, nagsubmit na ako application, di ba? Pero nagsub, nag-send sa akin dad ko ng screenshot. Sabi niya, sabi niya, oh, wala ng height requirement. <laughs> you know, like, alam na, alam na talaga nila. Okay. <laughs> Tapos my mom naman. Actually, my mom is, ano, my mom has been driving me around sa lahat ng shoots ko, lahat ng gagawin ko for Miss Universe. Kasama siya ng lahat. So, ayun. And I've, I'm used to doing things myself. Pero for this pageant talaga, sabi nila, no, tutulungan ka namin. I know you wanna do it by yourself, pero we're here. So, let us help. Ganun. Oh. Hey, wait. Speaking of that, how was your courtesy call pala with me or Francis Zamora the other day? I saw... Some pictures on social media. I forgot if it was from your account, but I saw it. Yeah, alam mo na ha kato, kasi I've never understood how it works. As hindi ko alam ano bang ginagawa sa courtesy ko. As in, like I had no idea. E eh, paano um, ka pinapunta tuon? <laughs> um, kasi I I need help talaga with you know, Shamber. I really wanna work with the the city. I really wanna work with San Juan City so I can represent it really well it's not just about me because eh, i'm not just going there as ayin bernos i'm going there as rosane marie bernos san juan city so for me it matters na i get their approval or at least their support so when i got there it was super light and fun i just introduced myself and why i'm joining ganyan tapos after noon actually amanda who is mayor francis um daughter she was there as well so nakausap ko siya she's very oh my gosh she's so tall and it was so fun and so light na parang we were just talking about you know it was like usual chikahan actually <laughs> yun okay lang yeah. it was really fun nakaka-relate ako sa iyo ah kasi nakaka-relate talaga kasi yeah. nakwento ko um recently like two months ago i accompanied a delegate who's representing someone in another national pageant oh i think pala noon i i know about this <laughs> oh um yeah from another national pageant just for she she brought me there for some media coverage tapos nang nakapasok ako sa office ni, ni Mayor Zamora parang wow ang laki <laughs> high ceiling tapos when i saw him I was like wow he's big <laughs> tapos ito na ito na nang nag-uusap na so talagang doon ko talaga nakita na talagang you know Ganito pala talaga ang ano ng mga beauty queens, de ba? Kasi talagang na, an, talaga bang mahirap ba talaga to power through if you really do it on your own pocket? I I would say so kasi especially like the photo shoots ganyan, the food pa lang, you know, pero um you know, I'm I'm also think I I also think I'm lucky kasi I understand and I recognize my privilege as a social media person. I do this for a living. I do videos for a living. So to me, I have that going for me. Pero um, mahirap talaga siya. I, I can empathize with the other queens na are also going through this process with me. Yeah, it it's a lot of work, you guys. Kaya ang inisip ko rin, ang, ang hirap maging beauty queen pala. I mean, I've always admired them, but walking in their shoes now, in our shoes, since I am one now, yeah, ang, ang hirap niya. And it takes a lot of determination. Mas tumaas lalo yung respeto ko, especially for the ones na tapos na. Grabe yung investment nila ng emotionally, physically, financially sa career na to. 
Nice, nice. No, iba talaga yung perspective pag nandun ka, pag ikaw na talaga na experience mo talaga doon eh. So there's another question here. Sino ang pinaka-close mo na delegate ngayon sa MUP? I wouldn't say close kasi parang ilang beses pa lang naman nagme-meet yung mga tao. Pero, you know, somebody I really admire, si Janela Quaton. She's also from KF. And si Janela, I super duper admire her kasi nung nagda-duck walk ako, nung first time ko mag-duck walk, tinabihan niya ako, sabi niya, girl, sasabayan kita, kaya mo to. It's parang, oh my gosh, queen, thank you. <laughs> to, to me talaga, like, yes, hashtag M-U-P-H sisterhood. So yun, sobrang bait niya lang. And all the other girls, natutuwa lang ako pag nagko-commentan kami sa pictures, parang ako, ah, yes, queens, I stand. <laughs> Honestly, Adam, nakakalimutan ko minsan na na kasali ako. Kasi ang dami kong favorites. Pag tinitignan ko yung pictures, oh my gosh, ang ganda naman nito. Ay nako, eto feeling ko, malakas to. Tapos parang, oh nga pala, I'm joining. I forgot. <laughs> ang dami kong idol. Ang dami kong idol. So, p- pwede bang pumili? Ha? Sino sa tingin mo yung mga tipong matitindi mong makakalaban? Yung talagang nasasokot ka. <laughs> Natatawa ko kasi hindi ko talaga, sometimes hindi ko mapagsama yung fangirl in me and the the delegate in me. Pero I I admire a lot talaga. I, I would say si Katrina. Everybody knows her naman. Katrina is so talented, so smart, so well-spoken. Uh, I can't wait to meet her. I hope I meet her. Magpapapicture ako sa kanya. <laughs> She is the nicest. I'm telling you. Ako, I also got to meet her recently through the, through this types of interview, and she's really sweet. As in, walang ere talaga. Nako comment din siya sa pictures ko. Tapos lagi yung kinikilig. Oh my gosh, the comment si Katrina sa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, alam mo, I'm happy for you. Na you know, you've been getting a really nice good experience talaga. Kasi it's na contrary to what we have been thinking about pageants na si Raan, sabota dyan, nakawa ng shoes, heels, makeup, naka, well, so far, wala pa naman yung kasi virtual pa, di ba? But, yeah, no? Yeah, okay naman siya so far. As in, sobrang tuwa rin ako kasi kahit na I'm going into this as a newbie, I am going into this without experience, you know, I think overall the energy I've been getting, especially from the fellow delegates, is very girl. If you need a friend, if my tanong ka, just ask. And dami ko na kuhang ganon. And I'm just so grateful because at first I was really intimidated, na feeling ko baka I'll be the outsider. But I've never felt that way with any of our even online interactions lang. So grateful talaga ako. Aww. <laughs> no, ka- wala, parang ang pait. Parang wow. I'm happy that you're getting this kind of experience. Me too. Diba? Alam mo, a lot of questions are still coming in. I don't know if we've been talking for more than an hour and I don't know if you still have at the time. Sige, let's try to engage um, some questions before we wrap this interview because it's getting late na. So, okay. okay. Uh, I, yung mga tanong nila, ha? Grabe, ha? Hindi yung mga tipo... <laughs> If you don't <laughs> if you don't have what you want what do you have to lose If I don't have what I want I would and what do I have to lose I I have myself to lose Cuz you know what I want is something that's outside of me it's something that I'll always work towards but I should also not be fixating on the things I can't have because I already have myself. So if I lose myself in the pursuit of that one thing na gustong gusto ko, then baka mawala yung sarili ko. So that's what I'm always, you know, taking care of. I have to lose. I have myself to lose. <laughs> Grabe. Iba utak mo. Wala akong masabi. <laughs> eto la. Eto. Um... Which do you think is a more victorious experience? Winning the crown of Miss Universe Philippines or winning the heart of your one and only true love? So in so in short, true love or Miss Universe Philippines crown? Okay, you know, I see this question differently because I don't think it's comparable. Your one and true love should not be a competition. It's not something you have to win. It's something that happens. It 
I feel like true love needs to be effortless. You don't have to work hard for true love. True love fits. True love is comforting. Whereas Miss Universe Philippines, that's a real prize because that takes a lot of determination, effort, a lot of self, you know, self uh, valuing. So definitely victory is Miss Universe Philippines. But true love, true love is a, it's priceless. <laughs> Grabe. Oh, yeah, na. Ano pa ba kaya ako i-prove sa interview to? <laughs> But you are a phenomenal speaker. Yeah, super like oh, we are not. Like talagang po kala nila pahawakin talaga ng mikropono. Oh my god, just ko lord. Hi. Diba? Parang buffet talaga. Buffet extravaganza. So last last few questions. Mm-hmm. When do you feel you are at your most beautiful? I feel like I am at my most beautiful when I don't have to apologize for myself. When I do the things that I do proudly, when I can show my face to the people who support me, to the people who don't support me, and to the people who love me. I feel like when I can be confidently Ayin, I am my most beautiful self. <laughs> How would you explain how would you explain a Filipina look to a blind child? Ooh, that's that's really tricky because a Filipina look. I I would say okay. Um a feel a Filipina look is very diverse, young child, but I can describe to you myself because I'm a proud Filipina and if you meet me, you will see that. I have brown skin. It's the same color as sand. I have dark hair. Um, I'm short. Even though you know you grow up, you might be taller than me, but that doesn't mean you'll be any less confident. You'll have years worth of experience, you know, having to prove yourself as a Filipina, but that doesn't mean you're any less either. So I guess if I were to explain what a Filipina beauty is like to a blind child, I'd focus on the things that I can communicate and that's our heart, that's our purpose, that's our history. And hopefully they capture the essence of being a true Filipina from that. You don't have to focus on any of the physical attributes because that only gets us so far. But I think what's ma- what makes us special is our heart. <laughs> Naiiyak ako sa slow clap mo. Ano ba? I'm getting so emotional. Wala. Kung ako, ang kung, kapi, kung mga ibang lahi ako at nakikinig, nakikinig sila nito, nga nga, nga nga. <laughs> ano na? Ganun na. Ganun. No, no words, Ayin. You're phenomenal in your own right. And I love the fact how you have been showcasing it for the whole universe to see. So, thank you. thank you so much. Alam mo, a lot of questions are coming in, but yeah, talagang we don't need to ask you more questions because I don't think there's any question you can't handle. Like, even you can answer questions with your eyes closed. That's how good you are, to be honest. So, ito na lang. Kailan daw namin masisilayan ang pasarela walk mo? Ooh, um, hopefully soon. I haven't really shown anything na Palavarn, because I'm still learning. But you guys, just trust that I am doing my best. Sana, please be kind. I hope you know, as kind as people are in this interview. Sana ganon din yung reception sa pasarela ko, because I'm really worried about that. But we will do our best. For sure, Sir Roger will really help you with this aspect. I mean, nakataya yung pangalan ni Sir Roger dito kung hindi, de ba? Pero for sure, you 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 are being guided so well. So. Someone's asking here, may pangalan na po ba ang inyong walk? Tawag po ba nila dito ay dictionary walk? <laughs> Alam mo, natatawa talaga ako dyan. Kasi yun nga, hindi ko to pinag-isipan whatsoever. Pero I've been hearing yeah, dictionary walk, walking dictionary. <laughs> hindi ko kinakaya. I don't know. I really don't know, guys. Kailangan may walk muna ako bago pangalanan. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Abangan na lang natin guys, 'di ba? Nako, oh, just go for sure in one of those day in one of these days i-upload na yan, niya yan sa TikTok, 'di ba? Uh-huh. Dalawa pala TikTok account mo ah. 
as I yes. was researching. So, may uh-huh. differentiation ba for... Yes. Uh, ano, so, the first one is Ayin Bernos, which is... Actually, that's my main account. Kasi Inglesera ako do, and Kasi I have, like, a, a diverse audience. I have an international audience. So, that's why it became Ayin Pero Tagalog, yung Filipino account ko. Kasi it's Ayin Pero Tagalog. <laughs> yun lang, yun lang talaga. No doubt. So, yeah. Keep keep showing your confidence self to the whole universe and everyone's gonna listen to you. Sobra. Slowly but surely, everyone will really notice you. So, eto, Arvin, my graphic, my graphic artist is saying, height does not matter. Your dreams and goals do. Parang, you, parang, ano to ni Kat, parang ano to ni Catriona na even if you didn't get your dream, don't worry because you'll be redirected. You'll be, you'll still be validated, but you'll just have to be redirected. Ang ganda, um, no doubt, no words. So, panalo na, uwian na, may nanalo na. Grabe, grabe, ikaw na, Aya. Ay, ayin, mga ngain niya ng mikropono. So, without hesitation, without hesitation, this interview is definitely one of the best. Thank you so much. I love this Thank interview. Just ko po, lagot. Lagot silang lahat kay Ayin. Grabe, I'm a fan na, sabi ni Jai McKinley. Thank you so much. There you go. This ends my interview. Ayin, I really had such a blast getting to know you. Sobrang ramdam na ramdam ko yung hugot mo. And whether you win or not, no doubt you are already a winner in your own right just because of who you are showcasing to us right now ramdam na ramdam namin talaga yung power mo yung intensity mo and i can't wait what you have what you still have in store for us in the next oh few gosh. weeks and months so as my last question can you give a message to all your followers and supporters who have been cheating for you to be the next miss universe philippines well, to my supporters and followers and those who are watching this journey, I want to thank you guys so much for seeing something in me that I guess not a lot of people have seen before. So for just having the courage to to believe, thank you so much because honestly, I would not be able to do this on my own. I would not get this far on my own. And everything I do here, I do because of the impact. I know this delegation will will make. So thank you for believing that cause as well. And I hope I make you proud. I will definitely do my best. If there's anything I can offer, it's my determination. And that's what I will show. So ah, please vote for me. <laughs> and that and that determination will see you through. I hope so. Adam, thank you, Sub Platform. Honestly, this has been such a dream. You know, like pageantry has been so intimidating for a long time because you know I, i've been seeing it as an up as an outsider but thank you for sharing your platform and letting me hear but uh, i can also meet everybody and thank you for being kind ha kinabahan ako at first but you were so uh, generous with your <laughs> time and compliments no no words you know ako naman ang cool ko lang naman talaga is for you guys to be showcased at your best light in personality nyo. Because if, if you notice, most of my questions are not really the Miss Universe type of questions. Because let's face it, let's face it, I mean, you guys can solve our world problems in just 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. Diba? No matter kung ano pang rhetoric nyo, ganda pa na speech nyo, wala sa inyo yung, <laughs> ano. So I'd rather get to know you as in the real you. Thank lahat you. kayo, lahat kayong 100, kung kakayanin ko, di ba? Kasi yun ang mas authentic eh, mas nakaka-relate eh. Yun yung na-realize ko ah, kasi parang even though we're so impressed in seeing girls nail their, you know, hard-pressing questions, pero nothing beats knowing how authentic and genuine someone is from all her experiences in life. Yun ang, yun ang one big takeaway ko in covering this pageant virtually. Na wala sa sagot niyo yan. Nandito sa puso. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. And just si Tito Raj. Hi, Tito Raj. Hi, Mr. Alan. Nasa really? comments siya. Where? I didn't Tito see. Tito Raj, proud ka ba? 
<laughs> ah, hi, Sir Roger. Yes, thank you for watching. Thank you for making it. Kahit patapos na, maraming salamat. Yeah, actually, siya yung kinulit ko to get to you. Sabi ko, nung isang pa-adjet event, sabi ko, Sir Roger, alam ko maraming malalakas sa KF, pero talagang inuna na kita. Pwede po ba si Ayin? Pwede po ba si Ayin? Kasi talagang iba eh, may iba kang, iba yung register mo sa amin eh. Pin parang mariyatatil ka talaga. Yung parang, alam mo, parang, wow, sino ba to? Girl, kung... Yung abs mo ba ready na? Kasi si Maria Tatila. <laughs> Naghahanda. Meron pa. I have a couple more weeks. We'll see. <laughs> My God. Maria Tatila will be so proud. So there you go, guys. This ends my interview. Maraming maraming salamat, Ayin. And I hope this won't be the first and last interview I'll do with you. Siguro even after your MUP journey, maybe I could you know ask you for another content to talk about your experience here in Miss Universe. Yeah. God bless you so much and stay safe and hydrated. Huh? Virtual hugs and kisses all the yes. way from my office here in Cubao. <laughs> I know. And after all of this is over, we get to meet soon. Para chica in person naman. <laughs> I'm really hoping next month, once we're good now, once our mm -hmm. lockdown situation is good, I'm really praying talaga. Kaya yan. Fully vaccinated na ako. Ready na ako makimingle mm -hmm. sa inyo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Adam. Maraming salamat Ayin and yeah, good luck and we can't wait talaga what you you will still have in store for us. May pasabog pa. Dictionary walk pa yan. Pas yung ilang abs na pandesal pa yan basta. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> All right, take care. Mua. Take care, bye. Had a blast. Thank you.